What's up folks, my name is Spencer and in today's React Native School lesson, we're going to be looking at uh, actually adding a swiping gesture to a list item in this list of movie quotes we've got here. We'll add a swipe to the right, swipe to the left and actually interacting with that. To do this, we'll be using my favorite library as of late called React Native Gesture Handler. So with that all said, let's jump into the code. I'll give you a quick overview of what we're starting with and then we can start actually implementing the swipe. Uh, actions into our application. So what I've got here in this app.js is just a basic flat list where we're rendering out a list of movie quotes. There's nothing special to this flat list. It's basics. I've got another video on the specifics of a flat list if you want to learn that. Uh, but what we can see here is we've got a list item component. This list item is going to copy over all of the data from an item, so an ID and the text. And then we've also got two functions being passed as props to this list item component, ones that one that is going to be called when we swipe from the left and kind of pass over a margin so that uh, it stays open. And then the other one, we're going to have a action that we can swipe to kind of reveal it on the right, and then we can press that action. Inside of the list item, it's very basic, just a view rendering some text. We've also pulled in that on swipe from left and on swipe from right so that it's or on right press so it's ready once we're ready for it. So in my example, I'm using Expo, but if you're using pure React Native, that's perfectly fine. If you're using pure React Native, you're going to import the swipeable component from React Native Gesture Handler, uh, like what I've just pasted in here, import swipeable from React Native Gesture Handler slash swipeable. In my case, since I'm using Expo, I'll import from Expo the Gesture Handler library, and then from Gesture Handler, We'll actually use destructuring once again to pull off the swipeable component. So the swipeable component is just going to wrap whatever component you want it to. So in this case, we want to wrap this entire list item. So we'll just go ahead, render out our swipeable. Go ahead, wrap the entire component. And now if we render this, Nothing's actually changing because we haven't passed the necessary props. We'll do the swipe from the left first. And to actually do this, what we'll do is add a render left actions prop. And then that's going to actually return a component, which we'll go ahead and put into a component called left actions. We'll go ahead and define the left action as just a normal component. In this component, we'll go ahead and return a view, which has some text in it. And then here we'll just say something like add to cart. We can swipe to add it to our cart. Now when we swipe to the right, we see we've got this little action popping up here. Okay, and to add some styles to this, so say in this case we want, once you swipe over 50%, we want that to take up the entire row. We basically just want it to automatically fill up the entire row. So let's add some styles to this. We'll say style is equal to styles.left action. We'll also add some styles to our text of style is equal to styles.action text. Our left action is going to have a background color of 388E3C. And we'll go ahead and justify the content center so that it's vertically aligned. You can see here right now it's sticking to the top. And then to get it to actually take up the entire width, we'll add in a flex one. For our action text, we'll go ahead and give that a color of white. We'll make it bold and then bump up the padding just a bit so that it's got some breathing room all around. So now when we try and swipe this, we can see we've got that white text, green background, and now before it would have stopped here, but if we let it go, once we cross over the threshold of 50%, you can see it'll automatically just go ahead and complete that entire swiping action for us. Now something else you can do with this swipeable component is you actually get two props, or two arguments coming into left, the left actions function, and that's going to be progress, so the amount that it's actually been swiped, and then a drag x property. And that's basically how far has this drag happened. So if we start here and move that much, or we start here and move that much, it's going to give us the same drag X value 
because that's how much the user has actually dragged uh, that component. So drag X is independent of where the user started. Progress is how far uh, across the entirety of the swipeable area has the swipe action taken place. So what we could do with that, let's say we want to make this text expand as the swiping is going on. So what we can do is first import the animated component. And these progress and drag X are going to be animated values, which means we can use interpolation. So let's just say scale is equal to drag X dot interpolate. That's going to take an input range of zero to 100. So basically has the user dragged it 100 pixels approximately. And if they have, then we'll put our output range to be zero to one. So basically at 100, a drag X of 100, then we'll have full size text. Fix my typo here. And then finally, we're gonna say extrapolate. Actually, we'll leave that off for now. Uh, so we can take the scale property We'll change our text to an animated dot text. Then we can go ahead, add in an array here so we can stack multiple styles, which we'll say transform. Then we'll give it a array with the scale in there in which we'll just pass that scale value. So now when we pass this over, we can see it's going to bring the content to kind of full size. But right now, if we continue swiping, it's just going to keep getting bigger, and obviously that doesn't quite work out. So what we can do to fix that is say extrapolate clamp, which means lock it down to our output range. Don't let it exceed those values. Now when we swipe, you can see it's going to stick at, one, at a scale of 1 so it doesn't get too big for the area. And then to actually get our on swipe left function to call, we can go down here to our swipeable component and we can say on swipeable left open. Then we can go ahead and call our on swipe from left function. Now when we swipe, it's going to go ahead and call that function once the swipe is complete. Alternatively, let's set up a write action. So we'll say render write actions. That's going to equal write actions. We'll just go ahead and copy over this quickly because we'll do similar stuff. So we've got our right actions. We're going to take those same properties. Uh, our scale this time, our input range, since we're swiping from the right to the left, we're going to take an input range of negative 100 to 0 because the input range always needs to increment. The lower value always needs to be left. Then I'll go ahead and figure out what needs to happen. So when we're at negative 100, we want to actually be at an output range of 1 to 0. Basically, you can see how these values still line up. So we start at a drag of 0, and we're going to go left, so we want to go minus 100. Once we've gone 100 pixels to the left, that's when we want our output range to be 1. Next, let's go ahead and change this to write action. We'll change our text to delete. Then we can go ahead and actually define this right action. We'll just go ahead, copy over our left action. We're just going to change the background color to DD2C00. If we actually, this needs to be right action. All right, got to make sure you spell everything right. So it's saying this isn't there. So we'll spell right actions correctly. Now when I swipe to the left, we can see our content starting to show up, but the text is all the way to the left. So we need to fix our alignments here. So one, we don't want our swipe left to take up the entire area, so we'll get rid of that flex one. We're going to align items to the flex end so that they're aligned right. Now if we save this, swipe left, we can see it's showing up. It's all looking good here. Now to actually get our button to press correctly, what we'll do is actually import the touchable opacity component. And we can go ahead and wrap 
this view that represents our right action in a touchable opacity. And then we need to pass that on press to it. The way we get the on press is we're going to have to make some changes to our right actions. So we'll change this from two arguments to just accepting some props. So what we'll do is use object destructuring here, and then we'll add progress, drag X, and on press to this. Then down here in our render right actions, we can go ahead and actually make this a function that returns a component. We know this function is going to take a progress and drag X, which we just want to go ahead and forward along. And then we also want to make sure our on press is going to be that on right press. So now when we swipe left, we've got this little area popping up. And if we press delete, we see we get that pressed right. If we swipe from the left to the right all the way, then we get this add to cart from just that action. So this is how we actually use the swipeable component from React Native Gesture Handler, which works in Expo or Pure React Native to quickly and easily build high quality swipeable components, which uh, reality is it's a very common UI pattern on both iOS and Android. So it's something that uh, you'll probably want to implement in your application uh, if you've got any sort of list-based actions rather than pressing some buttons and more buttons. It's just a good way to quickly build some different interactions for your users. So I hope you found this lesson valuable, and I'll see you on the next one.